Hey, once again, this is Mike on the mic. New York Knicks post-game commentary from a fan's perspective. Now, I'm going to cover two games, so I'm going to go through a very fast Reader's Digest version of both games, the game between Atlanta and also the game against uh, Detroit. Atlanta. That was a very disappointing game. First of all, I don't. there's no excuses about it was a matinee game and we are low on energy. That is not an excuse. Because first of all, when you throw in that New York Knicks jersey, all right, you represent the city of New York. This is a city that never sleeps. The city that never sleeps. So all that uh, is an early game and there's no energy. That's unacceptable. Okay. New Yorkers, as New Yorkers, we accept nothing less than the best. All right. Mediocrity is not an option with us. Greatness. That's what we expect, and that's what we accept. So remember that, guys. You may be new Knicks, all right, but you're throwing on an old jersey that represents New York. The jersey, the material may have changed, but the jersey is still the same, all right? Let's get it together. You heard of home land security? Well, I'm talking about home court security. Let's secure the home court. Be the line of the jungle. Let's hear the great line roar when you're up in the garden playing. Whoever it is, don't let Crawford come up in there and try to dominate. Don't let any of these guys come up in there and dominate. Y'all give it your all. All right, don't come up in there flat no more. This is unacceptable with you guys, all right? Too many times. I understand you road warriors, but we got to try to balance it out some type of way. We got to get some home wins. Now, to move right along, the reason why I'm moving right along real quick like this, too, is because I'm trying to get back to the New York Knicks and the net game at the Garden. Okay? But anyway, now we're going to go into the Detroit game, which was a whole completely different game. We won the game 125 to 116 in double overtime. The Knicks played brilliant basketball. I mean, from the start to the finish. The only one who was kind of flat, and it's acceptable that he was flat because he was suffering from the flu with Sugar Ray Felton. And he, he even ended up at the end having uh, 21 points, 11 rebound, 11 assists, 5 rebound, and he played 53 minutes. But when they got to like the second overtime, my man was done. I mean... It's a good thing that he recognized that he was done and was low energy because instead of trying to take shots like Marbury might have done years back, he was passing the ball and building up his assists. He really caught fire, though, when it was in the fourth quarter. Because prior to that, he was 0 for 6 on three-pointers. But he hit three back-to-back three-pointers in the fourth quarter, and it gave the Knicks a lift. Amari Stoudemire was brilliant once again. He played magnificent ball. He was omnipresent. Omnipresent means he was all over the place. I mean, he was... Blocking shots, he was rebounding, he was getting little putbacks, he was taking his little 10 to 15 footers and making those. I mean, he had thunderous dunks, assists. Amari played a very, very MVP style game against uh, the Pistons. And we played very kingly in the Palace. Once again, we won on the road, and that's five games on the road, five consecutive wins on the road. Oh, and Mavi, by the way, had 37 points, 15 rebounds, 7 assists, which just so happened to be his, uh, his season high. Not his career high, his season high. And he played 54 minutes. Chandler and Gallinari each had 20 points. Gallinari got hot in the first overtime. Other than that, he was so-so. All right, he got hot. Phils, I'm going to call Mr. Phils, uh, Mr. Consistent. Mr. Consistent, once again, he had 16 points and 11 rebounds. Now, he's like a Mr. Double-Double. Since he came aboard, it's like we never really miss David Lee because he's like David Lee. And he scores a little bit more than David Lee. A little bit more. He does a little bit more things than David Lee. He hustles, I think. He's just all over the place, this guy. He's a very sensational rookie. He should be considered for the Roy Rookie of the Year. I really do think so. Tayshawn Prince. Him and his little left hand. He was killing them with this little left hand, little left hand jump shots, little short tear drops, little left handed hook shots. I mean, when we play street ball, we know when a person is left handed, we say, take his left, take his left. That means to guard that left side. I don't know, this professional basketball, I guess his left is that dangerous that they just couldn't stop him because he ended up scoring 20 points and he was keeping them alive. It's not like he really dominated the game with 30, 40 points or anything like that, but he was keeping the Pistons in the game. And that's what made him a, a, a very strong factor. And to move right along, 
Once again, we depended on the three ball. Now, they saved us in the second overtime, and we was able to win the game. But let's not get complacent, and let's not get uh, 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 in, a, in a comfort zone where we're starting to depend on the three balls too much. Okay, because the three, you live by the three, you can die by the three. Let's continue doing what we're doing to get these wins prior to the game where we had to win on three balls in the second overtime. We were going to the rack, going to the basket. Great things happen for the Knicks when we go to the basket. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up. I'll see y'all after the Knicks and the net game, which is again at the Garden. Home court security, fellas. You've been listening or viewing Mike on the Mic, New York Knicks post-game comments from a fan perspective.